Namaste and welcome back to the DSA classes. The discussion is on arrays and now we are going to again solve a very commonly asked question in arrays which is to find the subarray of an array. So the question asks you to print all the subarrays of an array. Now what does this mean? Let me show you. Guys assume this is the array A which I have in front of me. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now first and foremost I would like to define the meaning of a subarray. Now Sub means a small part. That's what it means. Sub means a small part. Now, subarray means a small part of an array is only called as a subarray. A part of an array is only called as a subarray. Now, for example, 1 is a subarray, 1, 2 is a subarray, 1, 2, 3 is a subarray, 1, 2, 3, 4 is a subarray, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is also a subarray. How are you able to think? Similarly, 2 is a subarray, 2, 3 is a subarray, 2, 3, 4 is a subarray, 2, 3, 5 is also a subarray. I hope you understood. Now, if you ask me, sir, is 2 and then 4 a subarray, sir? Is 2 and 5 a subarray, sir? No. Because arrays by nature is contiguous. Contiguous means what? One after the other, one next to the other. A subarray is also a contiguous series of elements. You cannot have dispersed elements. So, 2, then you can't skip 3, 4 until 5. No. 2, 3 is a subarray. 2, 3, 4 is a subarray. 2, 3, 4, 5 is a subarray. 3, 4 is a subarray. 4, 5 is a subarray. 5 is a subarray. It should be contiguous. I hope you're able to think. Now, if I have to just list all the elements, see, we'll start, okay? 1 is a subarray. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. Then 4, 4, 5 and then finally 5. Any confusion till here? Now that you guys understood how to create all the sub arrays of an array. Now the question is how am I going to print all the sub arrays of an array? How will this printing happen? Right? For that I want you to focus on only this focus on this. Now see guys, if in case I had to speak in terms of the range of indexes which is forming a subarray, then you would see 1 is nothing but 0th index to 0th index, correct? From 0th index to 0th index if I print, that is nothing but 1, simple. Now 1, 2 is nothing but printing from 0th index till 1st index, that is what I am showing. Similarly, 1, 2, 3 is from 0th index till 2nd index. 1, 2, 3, 4 is from 0 to 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is nothing but from 0 to 4. Ah, done. Next, 2 is nothing but printing from 1st index to 1st index only. 1 to 1. This is 1 to 2. This is 1 to 3. This is 1 to 4. Next, coming to 3. 3 is nothing but printing from 2 to 2. Then from 2 to 3. Then from 2 to 4. That is what I am also showing. Similarly, 3 to 3, 3 to 4 and then finally 4 to 4 which is nothing but 5. So, this is the range of indexes. So, if in case I print from 0th index to 0th index, I will get 1. If in case I print from 0th index to 1st index, I will get 1, 2. From 0th index to 2nd index, I will get 1, 2, 3. In other words, all I have to do to print all the subarrays of my arrays, define a range of indexes between which I must print all the elements in contiguous fashion, I will get this. That's all it is. So, what if, what if the starting range, I call it as I. The ending range, I call it as J. Then all I have to do is print from I to J. What do you mean, sir? You may ask. Watch it. What I will do is, I am going to declare a guy called as I. I am going to declare another person, J. Now, initially I will begin from 0. J will begin from wherever I is beginning from. So, if J I is beginning from 0, J will also begin from 0. Now, what will I do? I is 0, J is 0. From I to J, I will print. Which means what will I get? 1. Any confusion? Next, I will be fixed. J moves forward. If J moves forward, now I is 0, J is 1. From 0 to 1, if I print, what will I get? 1, 2. Next, I is fixed, J moves forward. Now from 0 to 2 I will print. What will I get? 1, 2, 3. I hope you are able to think. J moves forward. From again 0 till 3 I will print. What will I get? 1, 2, 3, 4. I hope you are able to think. 
j moves forward again from i to j if i print i'll get 1 2 3 4 5 any confusion now j moves forward it will go outside the boundary of the array if it goes outside the boundary of the array then what i will do is i will increment i i moves forward j will always start wherever i is starting now i is 1 j is 1 print from i to j what will you print from 1 to 1 what will you get 2 that is what i am saying j moves forward print from 1 to 2 you will get 2 3 j moves forward print from 1 to 3 you will get 2 3 4 j moves forward print from i to j you will get 2 3 4 5 then j goes outside if j goes outside move i forward again j starts from wherever i is starting print from 2 to 2 then print from 2 to 3 then print from 2 to 4 then j goes outside in which case you will get this all this i hope you are able to think sorry this 3 3 4 3 4 5 any confusion after which again i moves forward j comes wherever i comes i to j if you print you will get 4 j moves forward i to j if you print you will get 4 5 j moves forward no more elements are there i moves forward j comes wherever i is print i to j what will you get 5 j moves outside if j goes outside the boundary time for you to increment i if you increment i first time i also has gone outside the boundary stop and ultimately by doing this you would have printed all your sub arrays simple i am bringing back i to the original position j to its original position now you must understand the code first of all starting with i so for i starting from 0 and till where did i go till the end so to length of a any confusion now for every value of i you must have a j which goes till the end which means inside the i loop you must have another loop called as j now where is j starting from j is not starting from 0 j is starting from wherever i is starting so j equal to i it starts from wherever i is starting where does it go till every time end of the array so till length of a any confusion till here yes sir next what now inside this what are you supposed to do now you have i you have j you are supposed to print from i to j that is your duty that is what i am saying print from i to j now how will you print from i to j sir one way to do that is see let us assume i was at 0 j is at 3 now what should i do i should actually print from i to j from this range to this range i should print one way to do that is i will appoint one more person called as k guys i will appoint k k will start wherever i is i hope you are able to think what i will do is whichever element k is pointing to i will print it move k forward print the next element move k forward print the next element move k forward print the next element now k is supposed to print only from i to j the moment it goes beyond j i will stop so i tells you where to start j tells you where to stop k prints everything from i to j simple way to do it very good sir how will you write code simple i'll write one more for loop where i will tell hey k please start from wherever i is starting from go not till the end of the array go till wherever j is so see k starting from i to j inside that print whichever element k is pointing to so a of k and this part if you are using python can be easily written using a concept called as slicing because in python slicing is there but in java we don't have this concept of slicing doesn't matter in python how to write code i will show you but i hope it is crystal clear to all of you right so this is the core logic of printing all the sub arrays of an array did everybody understand now what are we waiting for let's go write some code now let's write some code okay so this is my array which ultimately i have to print all the sub arrays of so what i'll do is i'll go on top and i'm just going to declare one static function static and it doesn't have to return anything because it has to print so void and i'll call this function as sub array function <clears throat> okay i'll make that as capital Okay. Next, this will accept this integer array. After which, uh, inside this I will go and uh, what I have to now essentially do is whatever logic I just discussed for you. 
So first of all, start by creating the outer loop which is i. So for i starting from 0, going all the way till the end of the array a. So a dot length, i less than a dot length, i plus plus. <coughs> Next I will come inside and it is time for me to, diff so i is the starting index, j is the ending index. So for int j and where should j begin from? Wherever i is. So int j equal to i, j should go to the end of the array. So j less than a dot length, j plus plus. After which uh, inside I will come and uh, what you have to essentially do here is you have defined i, defined j. Now you have to print between i to j. So for that k is there. So I will tell for int k, k begins from wherever i is. Till where should k go? Till j. So k less than equal to j. So it should go only till where j is. k plus plus. And inside that I will just tell system dot out dot print because I do not want the cursor to go to the next line. Sys out control space and I will just remove that ln. <coughs> and inside that I will come and I will tell a of uh, k that is what you have to print plus I will attach one space not there outside. I will attach one space. Any confusion? Good. Now this i if from i to j it will print all the elements one next to the other with a space. Now once it comes out I want the cursor to come to the next line. So I will come outside k loop and I will just simply tell sys out one system dot out dot print ln line I will just put so that you know control space. Any confusion? Right. So that cursor comes to the next line. Then the next subarray, next subarray, I will keep printing. Now I will just come here and call this function subarray. That is all you have to do. So I will call subarray and I am going to now pass a to it. Good. Now we have to execute. So watch it. I will just remove all this. Let me just go execute it. If in case I execute it, and uh, I show you, see, see, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then 3, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. Then 4, 4, 5 and finally 5. So perfectly it works. Any confusion till yet? So this is a very simple problem but again a commonly asked question. I hope you understood how to print all the subarrays of an array. Let us catch up in the next program.